Coming up on this edition of Abel Den On Air, we talk to people from Israel who came directly from Israel, and we talk about the war and how it's, um, it's progressing and what we can do to find solutions to the Israel war. All that and much more when Abel Den On Air continues right now. Major sponsors for Ableton On Air include Washington County Mental Health, where hope and support come together. Media sponsors for Ableton On Air include Parkchester Times, Muslim Community Report, www.thisisthebronx.info, Associated Press Media Editors, New York Parrot Online Newspaper, U.S. Press Corps, Domestic and International, Anchor FM, and Spotify. Partners for Ableton On Air include Yahad of New York and New England, where everyone belongs, the Orthodox Union, the Division for the Blind and Visually Impaired of Vermont, the Vermont Association for the Blind and Visually Impaired, Central Vermont Habitat for Humanity, Montefiore Medical Center of the Bronx, Rose F. Kennedy Center of Bronx, New York, Albert Einstein College of Medicine of the Bronx. Abel Den Air has been seen in the following publications. Parkchester Times, www.thisisthebronx.com, New York Pirate Online Newspaper, Muslim Community Report, www.h.com, and the Montpelier Bridge. Ableton On Air is part of the following organizations. The National Academy of Television, Arts, and Sciences, Boston, New England chapter, and the Society of Professional Journalists. Welcome to this edition of Ableton On Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of all people with all abilities. I'm Lauren Seiler. With me, um, we're going to be discussing the war in Israel and how um, things were going um, since last October. Uh, with me to discuss um, this topic is Safania Wecker and... Itai Shalfax, uh, all the way from Israel. Welcome, gentlemen. Um, last October, uh, we um, found out that Israel had a, a big war going on um, with Hamas, and um, you know we focus on people with special needs here, and um, all people with all abilities, and people with special needs were not doing well in Israel um, due to the war. Can we, can you kind of bring, let's start with you, can you kind of bring people um, up to date a little bit, maybe, uh, on your opinion on the war, and let's start from there. Um, well, I think it's a very sad situation. Um, definitely for all sides, and I think just the world in general is um, is hurting. Um, the war, there are a lot of things that you know, that don't go well in war. Um, I think that's all throughout history. But yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. Um, I think also just like people get hurt on all sides, and no one. I I don't think anyone wins in a war. Um, I know a lot of people are waiting for the hostages to, to come home. I know it also has, the war has created ripples that I think are not proportionate to, uh, as, as responses around the world, mm -hmm. um, specifically from people. I don't think so much from, uh, from governments, actually. 
Um, well, explain what you mean by that. Like the, the way people around the world are responding with um, free Palestine and, uh, and like all their, um, all their hardships with Israel, I think isn't, isn't stemming from the right place. I don't think that people are really aware of what is actually happening. I think they, some of the stuff aren't wrong, but some of the stuff is just not, uh, not proportionate. Do you think the media has a lot to do with it? And then we'll get to him. Do you think the media has a lot to do with it? Or um, I, myself being in the media for many years, in my opinion, the media sometimes sensationalizes things, you know, stretches the truth. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, when people are hurt, people are hurt. You know, there, um, there's no way around that. You know what I mean? I mean, you have um, ambulances helping. You, uh, you know, uh, Morgan David is the biggest um, uh, ambulance uh, uh, situation uh, in Israel, you know? Um, but do you think the media sensationalizes the situation when it comes to war? Absolutely. And I think to add to that also, I think Hamas has been doing a very successful job in their media and um, and PR. I think they they've had a lot of very. very well, Al Jazeera, Al Jazeera is a, a shut down in Israel because of it. They're, they're the biggest liars in in in. But I think um, they've also just had very strong campaigns on on Instagram, um, and other media's that have just that people have uh, connected to. Switching to you, what is your opinion on how um, Israel um, is working with this war? Um, obviously, we hope it ends soon, but go ahead. Um, I think it's a very hard war that we'll experience. You have uh, some operations before between, like, a, I call it a small war, and now it's a very big one, and a lot of people getting hurt. Um, I feel like the like the IDF and the Israeli government are really um, life focused. They trying to make uh, to save the hostages and keep the people of Israel safe and and trying in the situation of Gaza to have as less people the, as much as they can in the situation. Um, well, yeah, there are several things that I don't agree with. Okay, um, getting to your point, but okay, the the, me, the media does sensationalize and stress the truth, but you know, innocent civilians. Uh, this goes to both of you. Innocent civilians uh, are in the middle of this. They, in certain circumstances, they turn the water off. They're blocking humanitarian aid. Now they're bringing that in, you know, they're working to do that. Um, I mean, obviously, innocent civilians shouldn't be killed, right? Yeah. And we shouldn't have... Um, one of the things that I don't like as a humanitarian advocate and journalist, using children as shields, okay? Landmines, you know what landmines right. are, right? Um, we can edit a picture in the, uh, editing what the landmine looks like. Um, but but uh, your opinion on using kids as shields? I, I believe it's a, it's a bad thing. Kids and, and women or whoever isn't a uh, soldier shouldn't be involved, involved in the war as much as they can. What do you mean by that? Um, need to uh, bring everyone who is not supposed to be involved as far as you can from uh, military bases, from uh, a warehouse with uh, armor, with uh, whenever, if you know there is target, you, you should take people away from there and and not like, um, like for Hamas, the, their biggest base is under a hospital because you shouldn't take down an hospital, but all their operation goes out from the hospital, and then you 
you can't go into the hospital because it's not humane, but inside the the biggest military base, so you had to go in. So it's like yeah, and it's you not have supplies ethical. that are supposed to go in and can't. Yeah. So it's uh, it's putting uh, both sides in an unethical um, junction to choose from. Your um, take um, on that. I agree with what Svanya said. I think that um, when when Hamas Cause, yeah, because this those, lasted a whole year. We we talking about last October. Right. I think that um, a lot of those uh, a lot of situations is the, is a, are situations that Hamas has put um, has put themselves in to then create a situation where Israel can't. Uh, can't not hurt other people. Um, and about what you said about uh, humanitarian aid, I think that it's, it's a hard decision of letting in humanitarian aid that you want to get to the, to the innocent civilians. On the other hand, knowing that Hamas will take that and not give it to them and use it for more warfare, use it for the, uh, for the terrorists, use it to hurt us again, as opposed to giving it to the people who actually need it and need help. Okay, um, if we can go to the map um, of Israel that we can pop up on the screen. Um, so, Gaza has been in the war for many years. We're not just talking about last year, okay? 2014, 2012, 20 or not, you know, and going way back, okay? <clears throat> this is kind of a fault line, if you understand what I mean by fault line, okay? Um, who owns? <coughs> now, is the war, I mean, war can be based on stupidness, too, if you get my point, evil. Never trust a terrorist. You know, never trust any, a person uh, or, or I should say, ec extremist. But what, um, who owns the land? Uh, is it, um, yeah, this is freedom of speech. But the, is it Israel? Is it Gaza? Is it both? Uh, what are they fighting over? Um... So Israel gave Gaza to um, the Gazans in 2006, I believe. And, um, and since then, it's been their own territory. And the only connection is that like, Israel gives Gaza um, uh, water and electricity, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so like at the beginning of the war, right after it happened, Israel. This year, uh, last yeah. year, rather. Okay. Um, Israel disconnected the electricity that they were giving because you shouldn't be giving electricity to your enemy um, and to the people who just raided your country and kidnapped 256 people. Um, so, so they disconnected that uh, the electricity, and I think they even brought it back pretty soon after. Um, but it's totally in command of Hamas. I think what they're fighting over is Hamas, along with many other um, countries, doesn't want Israel on the map at all, doesn't want Jews at all. And Israel is fighting for our right to exist. Do you, do you think the war will continue and go on? I mean, we, we don't know what's going to happen over the next couple of months. But biblically, in the Torah, you know, right? Biblically, um, and, in the, and also in the Christian part of the Bible, okay? Bi bi biblically, is, uh, war has been going on for, you know, between the Maccabees and, uh, and the, through the beginning of time, okay? With, uh, with with all with everything that's been going on, uh, Queen Esther's time, and, you know, Purim and and Haman, and will this war 
Do you think it will continue? Do you, you, you think it, it will, or do you think it will, there will be a, a situation? Because there are po some politicians that want ceasefire. Right. Go ahead. Um, I then, think, uh, I think the war will continue until all the hostages are back. And, but the, the, the war that's more behind the scenes, the war that's more, um, that's at the root of all of this, I think that's the war that you were talking about between, not between the countries, but between the people. Um, and I know it's hard for pe some people to get along, but yeah, go, yeah. go ahead. Um, I think that the religious war, um, it's harder to say. I think that it'll keep on coming Did back. I say something wrong, or do you want to kind of elaborate on that? Um, I think that just like, there's a war, there's the war that's happening between Gaza and Israel, but there's the war that's happening between Jews and uh, anti-Semites. I think that that's mm -hmm. a deeper war that will keep on coming prejudice. back. Prejudice. You think prejudice will con continue or will it finally stop? Uh, probably continue, sadly. Sadly. Your um, take on, we said a lot, but, <laughs> but you you think this war has a chance of a ceasefire, or, or, or do you think it will con keep continuing? And, and, and I know this anti there's prejudice that's always going to happen between um, you know groups of people trying to get along. Um, uh, your take on that? Um, I hope it will end soon. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like the like step by step, we're getting closer to a negotiation with Hamas about the hostages, and we're getting uh, more and more um, bodies of hostages got killed through their captivity time, um, or in the October seventh, and they just kept the body until the IDF got there and uh, found the bodies. I have a friend who who found a. a Israeli body in Shifa hospital while he was fighting there. He found like it, it crashed in a inside a small fridge. Uh, what repeat that again, please? I have a friend who who fought in Gaza and he he found a, a one of the hostages body inside a fridge in inside Shifa hospital that was part of the inside of a fr a refrigerator. I'm not sure if it was a body refrigerator or some uh, refrigerator. It, it didn't tell me, but it's like... And they found three more bodies in that operation. And an IDF keeps on finding this week uh, four, six. six more bodies who found. And we hope, like, getting more um, hostages who are alive before the war will end. Because it's the... I think that's the main, the main uh, purpose of the war in the Israeli side to bring the hostages back and to keep the quiet of the Gazan border and the northern border mm -hmm. much more silent. Uh, in terms of separating people, as I know, the Tuzak Zarat, the ID, the Israeli ID, is is, is biometric. Uh, from what I understand, you know, has your fingerprints and other stuff, right? Do they separate? I'm just. Do they put Israel or is Jewish on one? If you're Jewish, and then if you're Palestinian or, or something else, they they put your. Do they put your religion? Do they separate that, or how do they? In terms of um, that situation. So separation um, of groups. I know that there are, um, I don't know if there is, like if it says Jewish or your ethnicity yeah. or. No, 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 like if brothers. you live in Gaza, it'll say that? Well, if you live in Gaza, you're not an Israeli citizen. Oh. You're okay. a Gazan citizen. So like you can't cross the border. Um, Without permission. Right. And then there are territories within Israel, like over the green line, that certain Palestinians there have a green Israeli um, 
um, ID as opposed to a blue Israeli ID. Um, but there are many Palestinians and Arabs and <gasps> Druze and other um, ethnicities that have a blue Israeli ID. No, but, the, but the, for example, if you're a nurse working in Israel and you live in Israel working as a nurse but you're not Israeli, your Israeli ID will say something else, right? Um, or, or is that a work visa? Maybe the you understand work visa. The question? I don't think the Israeli ID don't mention your ethnicity or religion. It's just a, just a blue ID. And there is about, I think, two million uh, Arabs who live as uh, equal... Um, equal citizens in Israel and have the same ideas going to the same same schools, like same uh, universities, mm-hmm. and get the high education. And they're getting they're being uh, doctors and professors, and there is no real uh, separation. There is no separation inside Israel. The like the place who has more separation are the. West Bank, because in the West Bank, if you're a Palestinian in the West Bank, you don't have a, you don't have a necessarily an Israeli ID because you don't live in Israel. But if you're an Israeli who lives in in the West Bank, so you have more permission to go back to Israel because you're an Israeli. But also there are territories in the West Bank. It's divided by A, B, and C territories. Where, so explain what you mean by A, yeah. B, and C. So, um, A is territories that only Arabs are allowed to go into. It's also unsafe for Israelis to go into. Mm-hmm. Um, B territories are territories that are mixed, are both. Um, mostly roads and... Mostly roads. Yeah. Okay. And C are territories that are... Israel is within the West Bank and are Jewish and... Um, they often have there are Jews workers. living in there are Jewish people living in the West Bank. Yeah, absolutely, um, and um, and like they often have Arab uh, construction workers or people coming in and out doing stuff um, that that live in the West Bank and are uh, Arab and not Jewish, um, and um, yeah. So like the segregation is not. It, it sometimes you, it's felt in certain places, but in most of the country, it's not. There isn't anything officially separating people. Okay, um, yeah, which also brings me like, I know that on the, on the Sabbath on Shabbos that things are closed, but there are a, cer- a certain maybe a certain number of. Business. I mean, if you're a doctor and you have to go work in a hospital. Yeah. then you're exempt from yeah. Shabbos. But are there Arab businesses that are open, or people that are not Jewish that are open, mm-hmm. you know, like a bakery or something? Or yeah, There's a lot. Yeah. Like, if you go through a Druze village, you're not keeping the Sabbath, so, so they won't, they keep everything open, and they'll rest in their rest day. Like, there's a freedom of religion in Israel, so no one makes you to um, close your business on Shabbos unless it's a, like it's a governmental business or it's like a... Or if, if you want a kosher certificate, you also mean, that means that you need to be closed on Shabbat. Repeat that again. If you want a kosher certificate, then one of those things is also being closed on Shabbat. Okay. Um, in terms of uh okay so we have a couple minutes left uh in in terms of what's right and what's wrong um do you think that the future of this war depends on, because genocide, look at what happened with the Holocaust. That was absolutely ridiculous. Okay. Do you think we're heading in that direction? Yes or no? 
I don't think so. How many? But go ahead. Try to elaborate in terms of well, Israel. Israel it came to be in 1948. Right. It became a state in 1948. Um, people from the Holocaust came over that survived, came over and created Israel. Um, uh, you know, with other people involved, um, Golda Meir and other dignitaries. Um, well, Israel, Israel's what, n n 10 million people? Something correct, like that, if I'm yeah. correct. Uh, but how, how is it, why won't it become another Holocaust, you think, the war? I think the big difference is that this time we have a country. We have a place to go to. We have a place that we can fight for. I mean, obviously, it's genocide. You're killing people, though. You're talking about you think, oh, genocide you think, from the if, genocide of the Palestinian people, or the other? genocide because obviously people from the Israeli side passed died also. I'm trying to make sense of this. Yeah. You know, killing people on either side, uh, uh, a citizen, is still wrong, right. but. Do you think, I mean, we hope it doesn't become another Holocaust, but uh, we're hoping not, you know, Baruch Hashem. But uh, do you think it, it, if this war continues, do you think that, um, I mean, the, how can I put this? The, the Israel, the IDF is strong, okay? And it continues to be strong. But do, do you think we might, uh, continue with this genocide? I mean, how, how do you see it? Um, genocide of which side? Of the Palestinian side? Uh, on either yeah. side. I, I'm, I'm, um, trying, I'm trying to make... you get my point here? Yeah, so from the... Um, if a genocide will happen to Israel, I hope... I hope not. I, like, that's why the IDF is fighting for, to keep us safe. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, uh, like, the... I'm trying, to, the, I'm trying to remain biased here, unbiased yeah. here, but yeah. yeah. Like, in, like, one of Hamas's, uh, um, like, big, uh, what big, goals. big goals are killing all the Jewish people. It's in their, um, in their, what they want so to kind get of from like, the war. So kind of like Hitler's ideology. Uh, yeah, uh, they... Like all, all... Jewish people must. Right. Yeah. Uh, they, they found uh, Nazi stuff in Gaza while uh, the fighting. The, it's part of the Hamas ideology, the Hitler's ideology. And um, from the other side, I don't think um, they either want to kill anyone more than whoever is a terrorist or. Fine. Trying to kill people. As, as, uh, yeah, well, in terms of the, and this is kind of the, the last comment and question, um, extremism, okay? Look at what happened with, I'm just trying to, 9-11, okay? That was extremism. Uh, um, they're, just, they're now putting to, or trying to, put to court or bring to court those that are re responsible, okay? During the Nuremberg trials, they brought to court who was responsible for things. Will there be judgment on Hamas if there are Hamas alive? They might not be alive by the time this is finished, you know? But do you think someone should be held accountable for what's going on? I think yes. the Hamas leadership and anyone who takes on Hamas ideology. I think that um, I heard someone say once that like Hamas terrorists might not be around, but Hamas is an ideology that you can't really get rid of. 
kind of like also Nazism as we're seeing nowadays is not just a people that were doing something all those years ago, but is an ideology that is hard to kill. For, you mean prejudice also by itself? Yeah. Your take? Um, you understand the question? Yeah. I, I agree with the, with the Italian. I think that, uh, like, um, any terrorist, like, they are on trial already. We're not, like, any any terrorist or uh, Hamas militant or Israeli captured through the um, the fighting and the war, they're, they're not uh, just thrown into a dun dungeon. They take them to, to a prison and they're having a full sentence. Uh, Israel don't just uh, throw people to uh, a life sentence in prison without uh, judging them first. Even, even the Nukba uh, terrorists who did the seventh are still getting through trial in Israel before they get in, into prison. Everyone gets a fair trial. Okay. Um, with that said, I would like to thank you for joining me on this edition of Able to On Air. Thank you. Um, uh, war and genocide is wrong. We hope that um, that this war ends and that um, everybody who needs to come home, come home safe. And we hope that, uh, because when this began, we, ho uh, we hope that nobody else with a challenge or, or special need is killed or used as a shield. Uh, we would like uh, to pray for those uh, that, um, we at Able Den on Air are praying for the hostages to come home. For more information on on Morgan David and the ambulance service that is servicing Israel, you can go to www.morgandavid.org. That is www.morgandavid.org, and you can also send supplies for those that need uh, medical supplies because there is an American um, office on their website that you can send to Israel. So that's www.morgandavid.org. And for more information on Abel Denonair and what you've seen today, you can go to www.orcamedia.net. That's www.orcamedia.net. I'm Lauren Seiler. See you next time, and we hope this war ends soon. See you next time.